So Jada Smith has had enough of Will Smith. There are so many surprising things in the book, but the thing that surprised me the most, that I actually had to reread it because right. I said, is this true? Right. Was that in 2016, you and Will decided that you were going to live completely separate lives. Yes. It was not a divorce on paper, right. but it was a divorce. divorce. So from the year 2016, which is seven years ago now. <laughs> yes. Y'all have been apart. Yeah. Oh, well, why a fracture? That, that's a lot of things. Yeah. And I think by the time we got to 2016, we were just exhausted with trying. I think we were both kind of still stuck in our fantasy of what we thought the other person. Because Will Smith has found himself in the spotlight once again, but this time it's for his alleged involvement in Diddy's wild parties. Yep, you heard it right. Despite already dealing with rumors about his connection to Dwayne Martin, Will's name has now come up in relation to these infamous freak-offs hosted by Diddy. Will was willing to give him a certain amount or what have you, and he didn't take it. So this whole situation is based on that. Jaguar Wright, a notable industry insider, also claimed that Will has been part of these freak-offs these secret lovers because it's not just men that these people are it, everyone's a secret have you noticed that it's all a fucking secret it's just one big ass secret this one's a secret and this secret lead to that secret now i sat here and broke it all down i talked about how the smiths used to party with the martins i said that you did oh my god you did you did you did you did so do you believe brother Bilal, that Dwayne? murdered Will Smith's butthole. Absolutely. Wow. The, the sadness that I saw in Lisa Ray's eyes. The sadness when she And just when you thought it couldn't get any crazier, the feds have reportedly gotten their hands on a bunch of tapes from these parties, and guess who might be featured in one of them? You guessed it, Will Smith. It is now a well-known fact that Diddy used these tapes to blackmail high-profile celebrities. Stevie J speaking on it right now. He'll be one of the first dudes that they probably pull to the side and say, yo, well, you say that your man, I heard you on TMZ said that he never did this and he never did that, but um, ain't this you? If those pictures or those films or anything like that exists. You know what I'm saying? That's what they, they pay those agents to do. So, of course, I don't believe that none of the people who are his celebrity friends is going to speak or say nothing until they're either contacted or they know what they really got. So you feel like they might be worried that they might be on tape at one of Diddy parties doing something they wasn't supposed to be doing. The Rob said in his affidavit that Diddy had every room taped and bugged. Diddy had, yo, bro, can you imagine he had every room taped and bugged and they found little bugs and little tape recorders. I mean, little, 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 those micro, um, projectors or whatever like that, or video cameras, they found them in the house, bro. So by them having those things in the house and people know there's drugs, there's alcohol, there's loose women, there's loose men, woman on woman, man on man, all kind of crazy sh bruh they just wondering who or when they're gonna let this stuff be known but not only celebrities not only celebrities i don't think it's only celebrities gonna be sure he had politicians in there he had princes in there he also had a couple of preachers in there. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That's crazy.
you personally, you think they got tapes? Well, my personal opinion that if Lil Rob could be trusted and his statement are true, they got him. They got tapes of stuff. And apparently, it isn't just Will that was linked to Diddy. There was story that he was trying to get Chris Brown. There's stories about, you know, uh, those, what was those, those, uh, those young boys that he had, a group, B5 or something like that, trying to get them. Yo, it's a lot of stories that goes around in this industry about not just him, other people. Jimmy Iovine. Ain't nobody talking about Jimmy Iovine. He got sexual charges and everything on him. But he got those publicists that's keeping it out off of CNN. It's keeping it off the major news uh, uh, reports. Nobody's talking about that. This is something that goes on, man, that they're going to push up under the rug and a few a few years later bad boy 5678 will be out in november cassie also known as cassandra ventura took legal action against combs commonly known as diddy alleging some serious accusations according to the new york times ventura claimed she had suffered from years of abuse at the hands of combs dating all the way back to 2005 when she was just 19. Because the lawsuit is so long. So looking at this lawsuit, she alleges that, you know, Diddy, he'll make her look online for BBCs for their freak off sessions. And she say that, you know, in this lawsuit that, you know, Diddy, he enjoyed watching her get smashed by BBCs. So, you know, what you think about that? Do you think she was the only one getting banged by? <laughs> Do you think this man had this woman search for prostitutes online just for them to have sex with her it's something fishy about that bro because you gotta realize this lawsuit and the information they had and they gave the Diddy people was six months ago so some of that stuff was cut out. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna give you this, but you gotta cut this part out. Let's just say, allegedly, or just for the sake of it, Cassie wasn't the only one who wanted, or she didn't want it, but Cassie who searched for the big black. And she was searching for the big black, not only for herself, but for somebody else who we all know that was in the real stories about him being on a yacht. That same yacht that Kim was on and the same yacht she got her nose broken on that somebody was doing something when she, to him when they walked in the room and it caused a confrontation. This is what somebody who was on the yacht said to me. You understand? They was telling that story to somebody. And it was a female. But my whole thing about it was this, is that anything in that lawsuit, you gotta realize that we only got a portion of it because it's been chopped up. Things has been taken out. So somebody will look a certain way. Now, they left some of the things in there. But I'm sure plenty of plenty of times Cassie may have seen some stuff that she ain't really want to look at. Ventura detailed some harrowing experiences, alleging that Combs had physically assaulted her, including incidents where he reportedly kicked her in the face. She also claimed that in 2018, Combs raped her. 
but it doesn't stop there. Ventura's lawsuit also accuses Combs of trafficking her, alleging that he coerced her into having sex with others while he filmed and masturbated. Jean Deal seemingly confirmed this. She did accuse him of abuse in his lawsuit, but she also accused him of sex trafficking in his lawsuit. How you feel about that? Well, you know, he get the sex trafficking because he took her to different states and had her perform sex acts with different, you know, male prostitutes and different people somewhat sometimes against her will. You know, we look at this and uh, we say, well, that was his girl and she, she, she did it on her own. She, you know, she didn't have to. Man, you can't say that. That was a 19 year old girl that what they call now groomed by an older man. And yes, she got some of the benefits of being with a billionaire, millionaire and everything like that. But it's just certain things that he did to groom her and put her into that position that she wanted the career. She wanted to uh, uh, do the music. She wanted to be a performer and all this stuff like that. He held all that shit over her head, bro. And now that she came out and telling everybody her story and what happened to her. The lawsuit further contends that Combs and his associates used their power and influence to keep Ventura silent and compliant, even resorting to threats against her and her career. One particularly alarming claim suggests that Combs threatened to blow up rapper Kid Cootie's car because Cootie was dating Ventura, a claim supported by a spokesperson for Kid Cootie. Gene Deal confirmed that everything that was claimed in the suit was true. So I can imagine what that little girl went through with old boy. She ain't lying that thing. Because if she would have lied, he would have fought her tooth and nail. He would have fought her tooth and nail, bruh. Don't get it messed up, Art. He would have fought her tooth and nail. That little girl ain't lied nothing that. She ain't lied about none of that. Do you know what she's going through? She you know what she's going to go through for the rest of her life? Her kids going to go back and see this on the internet? Right, right. And she also said in this lawsuit, man, that, you know, Diddy, he, you know, he came off as a mentor. But later down the line, he became too controlling. My position on him, he was never a father figure, bro. You understand? He was a... In response... Combs, through his lawyer Ben Braffman, denied the allegations, accusing Ventura of attempting to blackmail him for $30 million. Braffman stated that despite Ventura's withdrawal of her initial threats, she resorted to filing a lawsuit filled with what he called baseless and outrageous lies to tarnish Combs's reputation. Ventura's lawyer, Douglas Wigdor, countered this by claiming that Combs had offered money to Ventura in exchange for her silence, an offer she refused. Ultimately, Ventura's lawsuit was settled within a day for an undisclosed amount. In a statement, she expressed her desire to resolve the matter amicably on terms where she retained some level of control. Cassie's story seems eerily similar to what Kim Porter went through. Easy, man. But... That's Kim's story. That's Kim's book. That's Kim's book. Then you hear about the fact that he he broke Kim's nose on a yacht? Why? Well, I ain't hear about that. He broke Kim. Uh, oh, let's let's say allegedly, but it was told by people in her camp that he broke Kim's nose on a yacht. So. Cassie's story is Cassie's story is Kim's story. Cassie's book is Kim's book. Bro, when y'all look at this thing and saying force, y'all think this that he he probably threatened to beat her, threatened to do something like that. It, that that ain't what force is. It could come from the mentality. Yo. 
He put her in a certain position in a certain... Diddy's power and influence in general seemed to be absolutely crazy. She saw no way out other than doing what she told her to do. She had, he had mentally controlled her. He, he, it's like a pimp. Diddy had pimp potential. He had her mind messed up where it controlled her. She felt no way out. She felt like if she walked out the door, he wasn't going to do the music no more. If she went somewhere or she ran and didn't want to do that, their relationship not only would have been over, he would have painted a picture that nobody else in the industry would have dealt with her. I seen it Wendy Williams. He said it when we was in Cali. When I come back to New York and that B-I-T-C-H is on the radio. This is Wendy Williams, the hottest radio host in New York City. When she put out those pictures of the dude pulling his pants down and it looked like some gay act that was going on, he got on the phone. He said, let me tell you this. When I get back to New York City, if she's on the radio station, he's talking to a radio executive. He said the same thing to she, he said, nobody that I deal with, nobody that I know is going to do anything with y'all. No business at all. It ain't going to be no artists, no nothing. Gonna come. He's telling people that at a radio station. When we got back to New York City, Wendy Williams was in Philly <laughs> at a new station. Wow. That's the power he had. However, Ventura's decision to speak out publicly encouraged others to come forward with similar stories of assault and abuse. Shortly after Cassie's lawsuit, three more women stepped forward with legal action against Combs, shedding light on disturbing allegations from the past. In the second lawsuit, Joy Dickerson Neal claimed that Combs drugged and raped her in 1991. Meanwhile, Liza Gardner alleged in the third suit that in 1990, Combs coerced her into sex and choked her until she lost consciousness. Jonathan Davis, Combs's lawyer, responded to these accusations, stating to the Times that Combs denied all claims. Davis pointed out that because of Combs's fame and success, he's often targeted by accusers attempting to damage his reputation. Then there's the fourth lawsuit, where a woman referred to as Jane Doe recounted a harrowing experience from her high school days. According to the suit, she met Harve Pierre, then president of Bad Boy Records, and another associate of Combs in Detroit. They allegedly persuaded her to fly to New York with them, where she claims they plied her with drugs and alcohol before subjecting her to violent rape. This new lawsuit, it's a girl that was 17 at the time accusing Harve Pierre of forcing her to give him fellatio. And she also claims that Diddy, he flew her to New York and he gang raped her in his recording studio called Daddy House. Well, I think that any man that forced any woman to do anything, it should be like the Arab countries. They just start cutting shit off, to be totally honest of that man. Any man that forces any woman to do anything, they should treat them like they treat them in the Arab countries and just start cutting shit off. From their fingers, to their hands, to their feet, to their genitals, to their head. You know what I'm saying? So now, another thing of it is, is that how low do you have to be when you're going to put somebody on a jet and fly them all the way to New York to the studio. To me, bro, to be totally honest, it sound kind of fishy to me. But, and then it came from Hard Pierre. The Hard Pierre I knew back in there, back in them days, was a cornball that did everything Puff said. You know what I mean? Like he was, he was, he was one of Diddy highest riders. So 
I don't know that Harpier. The time they said it happened when I was reading in 2003, I was around at that time. You know what I'm saying? Me and about eight, nine other bodyguards. See, what people don't know, that Puff had a lot of bodyguards. Everybody has certain days. You understand? I had Saturdays and Sundays. And then when Puff went away or they were certain place and I was off work, they may call me and say, yo, Gene, Puff wants you here. Can you come? This, that, and the third. And if I could, I would. If I did, I, I didn't. It wasn't no big thing. So for them to do that, man, that's some real thirsty, desperate. The suit describes how Miss Doe has grappled with the trauma of that night for two decades, enduring significant emotional distress that has affected nearly every aspect of her life. Inspired by the courage of others who have come forward, Miss Doe chose to speak out. In response, Combs vehemently denied any involvement in violence, labeling the allegations as sickening and suggesting they were driven by individuals seeking financial gain. Similarly, Pierre denied the accusations, stating to TMZ that he has never been involved in or witnessed such acts. Even though most of the lawsuits detail events that allegedly occurred years ago, a February filing by Rodney Jones Jr., a.k.a. Lil Rod, presents a more recent account. Jones claims that while working together on the Love album, Off the Grid in 2022 and 2023, Combs subjected him to unwanted touching and tried to groom him. He further alleges that at a party in 2023, he was coerced into consuming tequila laced with drugs, only to wake up disoriented and unclothed next to a sex worker. According to Jones, Combs then pressured him into soliciting sex workers and engaging in sexual acts with them, using both financial incentives and threats of violence. Gene Deal had something to say about this. So did he got a history of doing that? One thing I did see in this lawsuit you know, Little Rod, he alleges that, you know, Diddy's son, Justin, was helping Diddy, you know, get underage girls. And I guess he was bringing them to parties. You know anything about that? I think Justin is the boy that could do it, if anybody. Him or either Quincy. You understand? Justin is a pretty boy. You understand? He looked young. He around that age, what, he about 25, 26 years old. So he, I don't know about underage, you know, uh, but it's a possibility because you know those girls, 16, 15 years old, they gonna like that light skin, that curly hair. You understand? Man, listen here. We got girls that's uh, what you call them, uh, uh, video vixens. And I ain't gonna mention no names because I don't wanna hear. They say they were sneaking into parties at 15 and 16 years old. So why you think 15 and 16 year olds ain't sneaking in the Diddy party. So Lil Rod, if he having conversations with him, he may say, yo, how old are you or something like that? Someone say, I'm like 16, I'm 15. Somebody had to tell him they age for him to know who you came here with. I came here with Justin. So what did that say? Yeah, I mean, uh, he alleges that, you know, Diddy promised him a Grammy if he participated in homosexual activity. I read that, man. You know what I'm saying? And what kind of power do you have when you can promise somebody a Grammy, a Grammy award? Who are you doing something with or who do you know that can promise? Beyonce can't, did Beyonce get a Grammy for anything? Did she get a Grammy for an album or anything like that? Has she got a Grammy? She got Grammys before, right? Yeah, she got Grammys, but she never got one for album of the year though. Right. So if she never got a, a Grammy for album of the year and Diddy could promise a producer if he's in a homosexual act that he could give him a Grammy, what kind of power, who he doing or what he know that he could get that done? That's some kind of spooky shit, bruh. No disrespect. That's real spooky. If he could promise somebody and good thing the kid as for how Diddy managed to get with Lil Rod. His lawsuit, he also alleges that Diddy forced him to watch a video of Stevie J having sex with a man. Who, little Stevie? Huh? <laughs> Who, Stevie? <laughs> what Jocelyn used to call him, Stevie? <laughs> Yo, I read that, man. Um, I don't know if you know this, but then maybe they have a tape that we don't, we, could, we didn't see because the 
pictures was a little vague. There was an exotic worker came out and said that was him and not Stevie J. But in order for them to put that in there, they must have clearly thought it was Stevie J or think it's Stevie J. But you got to get this art. Check this out. He knew that this kid admired Stevie J and loved the work Stevie J had done in the industry in the past. This kid looked up to Stevie J. Now, what if Puff told him that that was Stevie J in the tape? And the kid, the guy looked like Stevie J. He did facial, uh, they, his face, he did facial, his face was fixed like he was doing some of the faces Stevie J be making. You understand? So now, the kid could have been drunk, kid could have been high. He was like, yo, Puff could have been like, yo, you talking about, this is somebody you admire. Look what he doing. This Stevie, so people can't say, oh, he lying and everything like that because we really don't know what was said, but the kid said he told him, this is somebody I admire. This is somebody you got high aspirations for that you, that, that you want to be like. Look and see what he doing. This is what you should be doing too. Wow. That was crazy. And you knew Stevie J, right? I knew Stevie, Stevie J real well, bro. I knew Stevie J when he was with Bad Boy, one of the hit men. When, he, when him and Puff fell out, I used to uh, take Stevie J around and everything, bodyguard him in certain places and everything. Stevie J was one of those dudes. He was a good brother, but he always wanted to be seen. And when you hear these allegations, right, you knowing Stevie J, do you think it's possible that he could be gay? Well, I don't, I don't know his sexuality, but cocaine is a hell of a drug. Diddy said he was having sexual relationship with Stevie J. So all I can say is this, man. If two men lay down, how many homos get up? Two. <laughs> In my book. <laughs> That's all you can say, man. You don't know. You know, unless you catch him in an act like that. You understand what I'm saying? But if he said, Puff said that he laid down with Stevie J and two men lay down, two homos get up. Yeah, I mean, that's a hell of a quote, man. And if I'm not mistaken, Stevie J, he was with you the night Big got killed, right? Yeah, Stevie J was there. Stevie J was there. And as soon as Big died, he was supposed to get on the plane with us with them and go to New York, he rushed to Faith Hotel. <laughs> rushed just to the hotel. He was wearing my cross and my chain, right? I said, Stevie, I'm not selling you my cross. My cross got blessed. He said, let me wear it. I said, yo, okay, bro. Uh, he gave me 1500 for the chain and then never paid me for the cross end up giving Faith the cross and the chain to give to little Chris Wallace. That's what he said he did with it. You think it's a chance he was cracking Faith back then? I don't know what he was doing, bro, but it's funny they end up now. Combs swiftly denied these allegations with his lawyer, Sean Holly, stating, we have overwhelming, indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. In the aftermath of these civil lawsuits, raids conducted in Los Angeles and Miami Beach in March have signaled the possibility of a criminal investigation. Federal prosecutors in the Southern District of New York, along with agents from the Department of Homeland Security, spearheaded these operations. While details remain scarce, this is bad news for Diddy. People think that, that when the federal government go in there on you, the reason they got a 99% uh, conviction rate because most people say, <laughs> they got me. They don't go to court with them. So for them to have a team in New York, because they didn't really mention too much about New York. They had property in New York, property in Miami, and a property in LA, all simultaneously hit. Those different agencies had to get together, plan that, and that's not no bull. It, it, you know, that's a lot of manpower, a lot of money. So they want to know 
uh, how they spent the taxpayer. The taxpayer's gonna know why you spending my money on this to come up with nothing. So you best believe they had something in the first place to go up in there, either through, like I said before, wiretaps, you understand? Because if they convinced the judge that they need a warrant, they had wiretaps, surveillance, and different things that was going on, brother. First and foremost, Puff has been dodging the legal system for years. His affiliation with BMF, even though Meech has said that Puff never did anything, Puff never been around her, they still was partying together. So in the authorities' mind, they feel like Puff knew what Meech was doing. Then with the introduction to Jacob and different people, and a lot of people going to jail for money laundry and stuff like that, Puff being, um, and this is documented, Puff being a CI for an FBI agent, I said this years ago that Kim and Kirk Burroughs took some paperwork. They was taking some papers up to the to the uh, uh, FBI and stuff like when they was here in New York. They was taking paperwork up there and stuff like that. Don't know what it was, but later on found out that he was a CI. You understand? Now, what happens? He don't have that. The guy probably, that was 20, 30 years, 20 some years ago. The guy probably retired. Puff ain't dealing with him. No, he didn't pass Puff on or something like that. So now, Puff been dodging the legal system. Rumors circulated that Combs had fled the country on Monday, with reports indicating his private plane heading to Antigua. However, he was later spotted at the Miami Opa Laca Airport. Whether he's in the country or not, these investigations in Los Angeles and Miami Beach have once again thrust the rapper into the spotlight of public scrutiny. According to Gene Deal, though, Diddy will likely not survive prison. Did you see that video that went viral of Diddy pacing around the airport after his houses got raided? I seen that video. I seen that video. And I seen that look in his face before. I seen that look in his face. You know what I'm saying? Um, when he was with the same gang and uh, Mike Owens, AKA Mike Cock, everybody could tell him, D Ferg did a collection for him because he didn't know how he was gonna pay his rent and he didn't know how he was going to uh, 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 pay his rent, uh, child support, and his Cardinal, because he had one of those uh, drop top cabarets, Volkswagen. So, Mike gave 5,000. I wasn't giving him nothing. I'm just telling you right now. D, D was just collecting money for Nick. You know what I'm saying? Yo, man, we got to make sure because he want to kill himself. He going to kill himself. Diddy had that pace and he had that look in his face that he know something may be wrong or they may have something on him because they took things out of there. We may not have seen what they took, but they had bags and boxes of stuff that they took out of there. So he knows, he's getting a play-by-play -play of what was fired from Uptown Records. He was making statements about doing this stuff. He had that same look in his face. Yeah, he looked worried, man. I'm not gonna lie, for a split second, man, I felt bad for him, for a split second, but yeah. Like, everybody, I get all kind of hate mail, IGs, talking about that I'm trying to take a black man down. No, 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 no. I went through every step you supposed to go through when you got a problem, you got a situation, you got an issue with a man. You understand? I get in contact with him. Tried with mutual friends. Let's sit down and talk. What you did to Wolf's mother wasn't right, bro. You don't talk to her like that. If Wolf was alive, he'd take your head off. You understand? Try to talk to him. People, when they start getting in this power, certain, certain positions, have a certain amount of money, they don't look back. Some of them don't look back and don't think they have to come back. 
to the people that helped them get to those positions, the consequences, and I don't feel bad for them at all. Because people was trying to talk to them. People was trying to tell them. You couldn't pull them by the coat and let them know anything. You understand? They messed up the game, brother. When he put that shit out with them, money, power, respect, it ain't never been like that. It ain't never been like that. You got your respect in the street that gave you your power, that brought you your money. Totally different thing. He let that money, power, and respect go to his head, but he had it ass backwards. So I do I do I do I care what happened? Nah. He got enough, he got enough money to buy his way out of this. So we think. So when you look at that video of him pacing around and he's looking worried, and you knowing him, do you think it's possible that he might commit suicide? When you are a narcissist, there's always a possibility because you're suffering. But I don't think that he can see himself in a cage. I don't think he can see himself behind those bars. That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching.